Hi, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell, the global leader in regenerative therapies. All right, quick plug, R3 Stem Cell. We have over 40 centers of excellence in seven countries around the world. And today, we're talking about how do stem cells work, okay? The stem cells that we offer internationally are mesenchymal stem cells and also hematopoietic stem cells and a lot of the actions that they have in your body are similar. So there are six predominant ways that we know of that stem cells work in your body. Okay? And then there's a seventh, I'm going to make a note to myself, of how they don't work. Okay? So I'll give you a little surprise, a bit of info at the end. All right, so when you get a stem cell therapy, and I'm going to use the example of an injection into your knee joint, okay? We've done over 8,000 of these around the world. It works really, really, really well. So let's talk about what's happening. And this is for osteoarthritis, okay? Just good old wear and tear arthritis. So the first thing they do is they decrease inflammation. All chronic disease that we all have has chronic inflammation and scientists call it um, inflammaging. We get a lot of inflammation as we age, they just put the two words together, okay? But arthritis in and of itself has a significant component of inflammation, otherwise how would anti-inflammatories work, right? That's what they're doing. But anyway, that's what stem cells do really, really well is they decrease inflammation, okay? And that's very helpful for pain relief it's also helpful for other reasons, one of which is it helps not only reduce inflammation, but it helps reduce oxidative stress. Now, you don't need to know what oxidative stress is, but when that happens, it frees up your own stem cells to work better in your body. The oxidative stress suppresses that, and by reducing it, you can amp up that activity of your own body's repair toolkit, okay? So, check box on number one. Number two, immune modulation. I'm going to use the example of knee arthritis, but now we're going to talk about rheumatoid arthritis. What's happening in rheumatoid arthritis? Well, there are autoantibodies, meaning they're working against you to uh, destroy the synovial uh, fluid and synovial tissue. That stinks, right? Now, what a lot of doctors will do is they'll throw basically a grenade at it, like methotrexate. Methotrexate was a cancer drug. It's toxic to all the cells in your body. No, that's not the way stem cells work. They will modulate your immune system so that they stop those autoantibodies from destroying the synovial tissue, but at the same time, so they'll decrease the autoantibodies, but at the same time, they will boost the rest of your immune system, okay? So you get the best of both worlds. You get the reduction of the body attacking itself, and you get the increase of the rest of the immune system. That's one of the beauties of how stem cells work, all right? Let's move on to number three. I'm gonna put a check there. Let's move on to number three. Now angiogenesis is a fancy medical word. All it means is new blood flow. So let's move away from knee arthritis and talk about neuropathy, okay? The most common reason people get neuropathy is because of diabetes. And what happens in diabetes is that your blood vessels are going from this to this, okay? You're losing blood flow and the nerves in your legs are screaming out in pain. They need blood flow to bring the oxygen, the nutrients to survive. But you're not getting it with a lot of diabetes, especially if it's not well controlled, okay? So when we do the procedures for IV and for the leg injections, it will give new blood flow to help those nerves stop crying out in pain. Now they're getting the nutrients that they need. So it's very, very helpful in these stem cells when they provoke new blood flow, okay? Now, let's talk about cellular signaling. Now, 
I'm going to combine number uh, four and number seven. So a lot of people think that the stem cells that we provide them from umbilical cord tissue, um, and then we isolate the stem cells and, and treat with those, are the ones that are turning into your cartilage cell or your lung cell. That does not happen. The DNA from the stem cells does not become part of your DNA because it doesn't engraft, okay? So, how do they work? Cell signaling, or, or in scientifically is what's called <clears throat> paracrine signaling, is cell-to-cell -cell communication. These cells will provoke your cells to proliferate and to produce new specialty cells. It will also call in your own body's stem cells to then do a lot of the same. Okay, so that is very helpful. It will help them to pro, uh, produce growth factors, trophic factors, right? And what do they do? Well, they can help repair a tendon or a ligament or cartilage or whatever body part we're talking about, lung tissue, things like that, okay? So this cell signaling is actually the most important way that the stem cells are working in your body. So we'll check that twice because I may even come back to it, but I pretty much dealt with this one. Prevent cell death. Okay, this is interesting. Cells that are produced in your body typically have a set time frame of life, all right? In humans, you know, some people live to 40, others live to 102. You know, it's not really a set. You, you don't know when you're gonna pass away, right? Cells, unfortunately, often have a set time of death. Okay, well, you're gonna live 90 days and then boom, you're done. And that's unfortunate because if at 90 days they're working well, why do you want them to die? Stem cells are smart, right? So they know this, so they can help prevent cell death. They are anti-apoptosis. <clears throat> Apoptosis is timed cell death or cell death, so they can prevent cells from dying. If you can use cell signaling to get more, let's say, lung cells, and then the anti-apoptosis prevents functioning lung cells from dying, what are you doing? You're effectively bringing more and more and more to the area, okay? So we talked about this. Check. Now, prevention of scar. Prevention of scar is very helpful. Why is that? Because when you get pulmonary fibrosis, as an example, scar tissue is forming in the lungs. Now, people who've had COVID or other issues that lead to pulmonary fibrosis, you're basically taking, um, I don't know, it's, I'm not a very good artist here. I'll just make it a box. Let's say this is a lung, and you get some scar, you get some more scar, and these areas start to become non-functional. Now, stem cells are not going to unscar that tissue. That's still gonna be there. But wouldn't it be nice if we could prevent all of this from becoming scar tissue and non-functional? That is what stem cells often do. They are anti-fibrosis, all right? So those are the six main ways we know of that stem cells do what they do. And the end result is that patients get remarkable improvements in a lot of different conditions. I do want to mention one other thing. We get a lot of people who come to us and they have a genetic problem. Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, Duchenne's Muscular Dystrophy, you know, the list is endless. Now, stem cell therapy is not going to change a genetic condition, okay? It's not going to cure a genetic condition. But, there are no cures available. Wouldn't it be nice if we can help prevent a lot of the secondary complications of genetic conditions, that's what stem cell therapy can do. All right? Great. So visit, visit us online today at r3stemcell.com. We have um, a lot of educational information on the website. Visit our YouTube channel. There's a link there. There's over 700 educational videos on our YouTube channel. And call us for a free consultation. You can dial, <clears throat> I'll put it right here. Plus one for the USA, 844-GET-STEM.
All right, we'll set you up with a free consultation so you can see if yourself or a loved one is a candidate for stem cell therapy.